Hallo and welcome back to another Stormblood Final Fantasy XIV video from my side. There's another topic I wanted to cover. Tanks in the world of Final Fantasy XIV are pretty rare. If you check the party finder, usually the only open slots are the blue ones, which means there are no tanks in the current group which is trying to farm like Lakshmi or Susano. Why are there so little tanks in this game? The biggest point is the pressure new tanks come across. Maintaining aggro while doing mechanics and rotating your cooldowns while positioning enemies might be too much on new players' heads all at once, but using your cooldowns to reduce damage and staying alive with the healing of your healer or healers is what keeps you on your feet. Cooldowns usage and rotation is part of the learning procedure. Pickets usually are being promoted through a cast bar on the enemy list. There are some exceptions, so popping it early mitigates a lot of your taken damage. Also, not always, but often enough, the current main tank of the encounter has to deal with less mechanics than the rest of the group. For example, and in the Susano fight, he will never, the main tank will never get targeted by the lightning or by the push away from Susano, so you're pretty safe on those mechanics. Another reason would be accidentally drawing enmity from the current main tank, which was very reasonable before 4.0, but should not be a big problem anymore. Paladins pre 4.0 had no real way around using at least part of the aggro combo, because back then their strongest combo was comboing out of their aggro move. That led to Dark Knights not pairing up well with them, as their threat combo was and still is a DPS loss. Also, Warrior had to adjust on certain fights to not use too many Butcher's Block combos to steal aggro from the main tank. With the changes in 4.0, having all tanks DPS combos generating no extra threat is making this a whole lot easier. If you are in off tank position, simply not use your aggro combo. It deals less damage anyway. If you have 100% on time on the boss, you need to make sure you watch the enmity gauge. If you have to handle other mechanics, this won't be as big of a threat. For example, an A9 Savage, because usually there the off tank was taking care of the bombs and then did not have 100% uptime on the boss, which means if he used a few more butcher blocks combos on him, it wouldn't affect the enmity gauge too much. Messing up tank swaps, which either gets yourself or the other tank killed, might be another point. A tank swap pretty much has the same mechanic every time you need to do it. Once the off tank steps into main tanking position, you use Provoke, which gets you to the top of the enmity list, followed up by one or two more aggro gaining moves to make sure you keep the boss on you. Being too greedy here could make you lose the hate to the other tank again, as he's right behind you on the enmity list. If you keep this in mind and also the previous tank swaps to his DPS stance after you voked, if he hasn't already or wasn't already in DPS stance to begin with, this should work 100% of the time. Many fights don't even require a tank swap, just be sure you can actually pull it off if the fight dictates it. Another point would be losing aggro to two strong DPS or overhealing healers. This can be an issue, though it is not necessarily the tank to blame. Since 4.0, every job, at least to my knowledge, has at least one ability that either lowers the enmity gain or cuts it in half. Also, ninjas have Shade Walker, transferring aggro to a dedicated target, hopefully the tank, and Smokescreen for more enmity reduction on one certain member in your group. Though, even if the group is not using them, or has them on cooldown, just make sure to use one aggro gaining ability every now and then to stay on top. Like, usually if I go to dungeons and I'm not sure if people will actually use their enmity lowering skills, I have like using 4 DPS combos and then use one aggro combo or half of the aggro combo and then going back to DPS and that usually lets me maintain aggro pretty easily. Another big thing is probably choosing vitality over strength accessories in current endgame. Screenix made accessories role specific so you could not cheese yourself into instances that you are not geared for on a specific class. Also tanks are unable to use the new strength gear. The issue with this is, their strength does not scale with vitality anymore. Players, Xenosis Vex for example, you probably know him because he was ranting about this, are already debating this, since accessories pre Stormblood are not treated that way. So for a big boost in damage, tanks can go use that eye level 270 creator gear. Going full strength to lose it 
on a chunk of HP or having a ton more HP but not hitting nearly as hard. That is mostly up to you. If you're not tanking in a hardcore progressing group, people won't force you to do it. If you're new to the content, you should probably play it safe and exchange one accessory at a time while you are getting more comfortable or trying to get through a certain phase quicker by using less of it and more strength. But besides those negative points, and there are probably even more, like for example, often people, if you're going into an instance and you're the tank, they expect you to know everything and leading the group, but tanks are often enough new as well, and also Sometimes they're even trying to force you to make bigger pulls or even smaller pulls maybe in some points, but really that is up to you. You should at least check the group, check the composition you have and decide from that point how much you think you are okay with pulling. And if you're taking it slow, people should not be forcing you to take more. Also there are a ton of advantages when you play a tank. For example, you almost always have instant cues on any roulette or instance while leveling or farming tomes. Also, as said before, often only tank spots in groups in the party finder are open. Easy access for you. Except for the weapon, tanks share their entire gear, so you can swap your gear around more easily. This means if you have all tanks on level 70, you only need to farm accessories and your gear one time, you only need separate weapons. People even pay for quicker dungeon runs. I do not want to promote this too much, but DPS queues are insanely long, especially since two new DPS came into the game. I made quite some guilt taking one or two DPS with me to instances while I was even leveling my tanks. Also, another thing during forman content, if you can need on equipment, you will definitely get it. Healers might fight with casters in low level areas about their accessories or even their left side of equipment, but DPS might even have to fight in every dungeon with the other DPS to get what they want, what they desire. Because there could be technically two bards or two, ma uh, two machinists or even like one black mage and one red mage who are fighting over accessories. But as a tank in man content, you're always safe to get your equipment. This is pretty much everything I wanted to cover because you probably have noticed it yourself. Tanks are extremely rare. I can only speak on my uh, speak for my server and speak for my server group on Ever. When I check the party finder, it's pretty rare to run into groups where tank spots are filled first. So maybe this is different on other servers. I do not know, but I would at least say, hey, if you're looking for a raid group and you're open to tanking, but you're like too afraid of doing it. Just give it a try. The community is pretty, pretty forgiving. Just make sure to tell the people you're new when you get into the content and people will probably try to teach you how it goes. Or even if you're in NFC, you probably have another tank with you. Just ask him for advice. This is the best thing you can do. That's already everything I wanted to cover. Make sure to give me your opinion about this thing because I'm really curious to hear other people, like people who may be considering tanking and haven't done it yet or even tanks who might have more advice on more advantages or what they think disadvantages which I have not been covering in this one. Would be pretty curious to hear about this. Thanks a lot and see you guys in the next one.